Okay, let me uh, con uh, uh, add some a couple of uh, uh, details uh, that I forgot yesterday, and they were subject of uh, frequently asked questions, so that it's better to tell everybody um, before we go on with the topics. Uh, uh, we discuss about the project and we say that uh, uh, the requirement for the GR is to integrate some kind of voice interaction. Okay, what I forgot to say is that we will have time during the course uh, to uh, to learn about uh, how to do this kind of, so it's not on, on your own. We will, in the labs and uh, in the lectures, uh, show you the, the libraries actually for managing this kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid for that, uh, it's something that is inside the course, okay? Uh, web, web programming is, is on to you, just we are, uh, we assume that you are already able to create a web application, but this specific part of how to integrate voice uh, into, the web, into the web application is something that's part of the course topics. That was the first point. The second point is uh, about this uh, first uh, project idea that you have to submit uh, next week. Okay. Um, the point uh, I want to make is that it's uh, an idea. No? It's, it's not already, it cannot be already a description of the system. No? Uh, you, at this point, we don't know what the system will do because that's exactly the point of the need finding phase that we will work on next week, actually. So um, we should describe the idea just in terms of uh, the application domain. So where is it applied? To whom is it applied? Which is the target population? In which context do you want to help this target population? Okay, these people, okay, we want to help them when they are doing this kind of activity, this kind of task. Uh, it's too, uh, don't be too specific, huh? because we don't know really what are the, ma the main problems uh, or the main needs uh, of the users. So if you assume too early that that user needs a specific kind of feature or a specific functionality, then you risk uh, of building uh, a system which is not useful, actually. And so it will not be used, independently from its uh, real uh, ease of usage, but nobody will care okay, about that. Um, so try to be broad and uh, ha have time. We have, uh, say, a couple of weeks' time uh, to work on the idea and to try to understand from the user what the users want. Uh, another point is we already maybe some have some idea about which technologies, so with devices, desktop, mobile, or whatever, will be used by the users in, the, in that context. So it's a consequence of the context in which the users work. Okay, so. Do not write yet specific needs or specific functionality or the tasks of the system. This is something that will come later. So just to clarify, uh, I try to, to write one example project. So don't copy this one uh, without paying. Uh, for example, the title could be Cooking at Home. So you know there is a service that uh, if, you are, if you want to have a dinner or offer dinner to uh, your friends, uh, there are some people who can come into your home and do all the cooking and you, you only do the good uh, presentation, but uh, uh, you, do, you don't do the actual work, okay? So that could be an idea of uh, an application domain. So I want to work in that domain, that specific activity that may exist with or without technology. Huh? We, are we will try to add some web application that will help in that domain. And will help who? It will help uh, the users that go to other users homes so like, like sort of uber cooks or something like that you no know, people that uh, privately want to go to other people's home huh? and that that are our targets or probably the target could be different could be the people that host the cooks in their homes they are two different two separate targets targets so which one do you focus on it's it's uh, your choice or maybe both but they have different requirements. So maybe uh, some kind of functionality will be for one and some kind of fun uh, other functionality will be for the other. So in this case, we, have, we imagine an application domain with uh, two different uh, user populations that collaborate and collaborate thanks uh, to our platform. Mm. So this general picture is already clear. We have these groups of users, this application domain, and the context is, uh, Okay, they want to interact for the reservation, 
and find the best cook for my dinner tonight so my, maybe i'm a vegan uh, or i'm a vegetarian or i have some requirements that the cook is specialized in that kind of cuisine maybe and or maybe selecting the recipes so this is something i like this is something i don't like oh this is something i have in my fridge i i bought this uh, and so pre please try to create a dinner with these ingredients and so on so or uh, the actual cooking so uh, the recipes and checking in real time what so there are different contexts uh, of this big application domain in which we can create our project so right now we are, i'm not already saying uh, uh, we need uh, a search engine we need a pro a user profile we need uh, a recommendation system i don't know okay which are the most important features for the users we will once we identify the users we try to use the, the tools the methods of uh, um, of the human centered design processes just to extract this information from the users okay so right now just some big picture like this this is probably is even is, is even too much there's even too much detail in here then from from we something that you can commit today and will not change uh, when you start thinking uh, talking to the users okay so just not to, uh, don't go too far okay you can go farther by trying to think um, about more details about the project by trying to separate what is the general framework the general idea from the specific uh, user requirements that will come later you will integrate them later they're not required in this step okay i will update the, the slides on the on the web website of course but uh, i thought it was easier to give you an example in order to avoid correcting uh, maybe too many wrong submissions okay so let's start in discussing the the first uh, uh, technical topic uh, uh, well today's discussion is more like uh, a sort of a table of contents for the whole course so today we will see a lot of concepts and for many of them i will say or pro or i won't say but it will be like that uh, uh, that that concept will be uh, the subject of the following lecture so right now we try to uh, to put the big, the big picture together and then we move uh, on to the single uh, topics uh, in the next weeks hmm? so the goal for today is just to understand or to start giving a definition of what we really mean by human computer interaction and what we really mean or how it is, de uh, is defined the uh, usability issue and start uh, discussing about the design processes so actually what are what is uh, one possible or more than one possible um, software development process that may include uh, uh, usability as one of the key um, um, key quality key attributes hmm? and in particular will uh, follow the user center design process that, that is proposed so uh, human computer interaction is here at the bottom of this picture which is actually the collection mm, it collects uh, feedbacks it collects uh, information it collects uh, suggestions uh, from many many disciplines uh, we call it aci human computer interaction some other people call it uh, mmi man machine interaction of course man machine interaction is not uh, politically correct today because it's that the, it's just the man word which cannot be pronounced in, in these years so uh, from man now we go to human uh, in some contexts so this is not used anymore hmm? uh, in some contexts they use the term human machine interaction hmi for example if you talk to people from the automotive industries they talk about hmi not hci because it's a machine it's not a computer never mind that the machine contains computers so or you interact actually with the computer part of the machine machine is more generic more general okay but you, you can say that these two definitions hmi and aci are different uh, usages in different domains but they mostly mean the same thing okay so these are the main topics uh, user-centered design here on the bottom is uh, one of the possible processes that then that will help us uh, building systems uh, with the attention with the focus on human computer interaction so this is the process this is the general topic and this topic draws uh, from uh, technologies and from methods 
so in the top right we have ergonomics we have human factors which are disciplines or if you if you think about ergonomics it's something that was developed uh, in the mechanical sense the word ergonomics is more for the, mm, the suitability of a device uh, for the operation of a person so a chair can be ergonomic uh, a workstation you know for drilling or for moving parts uh, can be ergonomic because it uh, takes into account the shape of the body the strength of the body the um, uh, the tiredness uh, that, uh, that a worker can have af after doing some some gesture repeatedly and so on so this uh, this, this whole discipline of ergonomics so when you uh, sit onto your car you are comfortable when you sit into a, an airplane seat you are much less comfortable okay that's ergonomics <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, it has been designed with comfort and with ease of usage uh, in mind and it's more something li like about spaces measurements strengths uh, forces and um, torques and so on so the interaction with the physical part but many concepts from ergonomics also translate into the virtual world into the non-physical world uh, uh, where we when we take into account also the, the visual ergonomics so seeing clearly and seeing clearly an object or seeing clearly a screen or uh, reading clearly from a screen or hearing uh, or noises and so on so much of this domain can translate to our hmi um, or hci uh, interest and uh, human factor is a broader term that draws from don't be scared uh, psychology or sociology uh, means that we you cannot design a system without taking into account the characteris characteristics of the users that are going to use the system these users will get distracted they are imprecise uh, they are uh, uh, they can get angry they they talk to each other they find workarounds uh, and they have some behavior okay which is typical of the human nature so these human factors will we, we, we should take them into account uh, in order to prepare a system that is able to actually uh, take into account these users we are not designing a machine to be used by another machine where the rules are set by us we are designing a machine or a system or an application to be used by humans mm? and so we need we need to take that into account mm? like when you're designing a ship you take into account whether a ship goes into the uh mm, to the sea or into a river or into a lake and then you design it differently the same goes for people okay and uh, all these disciplines in particular ergonomics uh, is uh, as strong uh, notions uh, also quantitative notions or performance uh, of so the speed with which uh, a worker can execute some action and the error rates uh, that are acceptable or that are normal or not so all this uh, so uh, it's not just qualitative but uh, there's a lot of quantitative knowledge in these disciplines and uh, so that's for about people and the other top left uh, quadrant of this picture is about technologies so we create a usable system because we design a user interface that's one of the focuses It's not the main focus the interface we can imagine a, a, a screen or a page or an application but okay this is important for usability but not just one screen mainly the whole sequence or collection of screens of pages the flow is more important than the single page well no more important i don't know they are both important how to interact with the page and how to move throughout the pages there are two important aspects so it's not just uh, the user the, uh, the generating a good uh, user interface for one screenshot okay so it's the whole domain of creating them and so the the interface itself and the interaction of the user with the with the interface so the interface is not a statical uh, um, statical artifact that is there but when when you use it uh, it changes so there's this interaction these systems are interacting they are responding to your actions they are modifying and you are modifying your actions according to the modification of the systems and you are playing this uh, information exchange game mm, until you reach your goal mm. so uh, this is something that 
we have technology for doing that we have devices for interact uh, for interaction we have the smartphone we have screen we have mice and, and so on uh, and we meet we need to use them in the right way so there's nothing new actually here it's just using what we have and what we know with a focus with a goal on uh, usability so we are we have three main ingredients uh, the users and the machines of course and uh, the tasks that the users should accomplish with the help of the machine if you have no task uh, you have no human computer interaction we are designing the interaction of a user when that user is going to try to solve uh, some problem try to reach some goal and for reaching a goal it will execute some tasks and we are creating the interface and the interaction framework for him or her to execute that task mm. there's no usability in general there's the usability of a specific task or an interactive system designed for good performance on a specific ta task or set of tasks mm. that's why you cannot buy it or is usability cannot be part of the technology or part of the framework okay i'm using i don't know python because it guarantees usability now there's no guarantee from the technology to the actual usability of the system you cannot guarantee it in a cross application way you must be inside the application say okay in this specific case which are the tasks who are the users how can i make these tasks easier for these users so it's very specific the frameworks or the ideas and the methods are general but then the results the application are fairly specific okay um, okay usability can be we will have a definition later on today but uh, let's start thinking about three different uh, va uh, variations of the word uh, usability usability as the radix for useful and something is useful will also be used so usually something that really help the user to reach some goal after executing the task uh, the user is happier because now he has completed some activity that he wanted to do and so if it's useful uh, useful probably will also be used because actually it will solve some problems preferably if it's also usable so easy to use so it's something that solves a problem i will use it over and over again because it helps me and it helps me in a good way so i don't have to fight against it okay so we have uh, some systems that are used uh, forcibly you are forced to use that system because there's no alternative no? yesterday we had the, the example of the of the portal della didattica in which you have you must do it uh, it's useful it's used uh, because you have to use it uh, it's not very usable hmm? there can be something very usable nice to use but it, you, you maybe can be useless so you you know you're not really using it because it's you don't care about what it does okay so it's a combination we want to strike a one on all the three uh, items uh, we also assume we won't spend uh, you say you uh, if you open a, a, a ACI book any ACI book it will spend one or two chapters talking about the humans all the sensory systems all the eyes and the, how the brain processes the images uh, uh, and uh, um, how the brain the ear and the hearing system and the brain also process the audio and so on and all the cognitive systems about uh, how you uh, perceive uh, information how you memorize information and recall it later and so on okay there's a lot of information on this we won't spend time in this course for this uh, probably if some of you have done some maybe computer graphics course or something like that all the perception part visual perception part is already uh, known uh, we'll try probably to to, to give you a, uh, some uh, some reading some article that try to summarize it so we don't want to spend we cannot spend a couple of weeks uh, in discussing this topic they are not so critical okay 
uh, we can draw a, a lot uh, from our experience mm -hmm. but also remember all the visual illusions that you see around uh, so that our perception is, is never perfect uh, it can also be tricked or can always um, draw the wrong conclusion when it sees or when it perceives some information so we need to, uh, to be careful okay and on the other hand uh, the other ingredient is also the computer for which we already know everything so we don't want to, to spend uh, like the books to spend a, a chapter that describes what is a mouse what is a screen and so on okay so these are the two big pillars that we want to put together and uh, add them to communicate and this as we understand uh, is a multidisciplinary effort so it's not just uh, okay we have computer science we have computer engineering and this is our main focus but there are many other focuses for human computer interaction for example business used means uh, people are going to use it and going to pay for using it so there's a i'm investing in building a system this investment must have a return if nobody's using the system then there will be no financial return did you ever consider that all the compulsory applications the portata didattica are much more difficult but less usable to use uh, than commercial applications because in commercial applications, if the user find it difficult they won't use it and use money in the say public administration applications if you don't use it you lose money or you lose opportunities or you cannot do some tasks so there's no incentive commercially monetary incentive to make it more usable you are not losing customers because they are they need to do to use it intranets so the tools made by companies for their employees are usually harder to use than public websites or public services for the same reason in one case i have to attract and maintain users in the other case the users are there and must use what i feed them there's another discussion about the cost of usability or of missing usability so how much time are my employees losing because my system is wrong or is, is not usable but this cost is very difficult to measure so it's not the, on the top selling points of, uh, of the managers hmm? so but there are strong business cases for, for usability especially all the public sites huh? uh, when you go to a new website or you have a look at a new application how much time do we give it uh, before deciding whether you like it or not whether you will return to the website uh, website or will you will never return to that a couple of seconds maybe less and in that couple of seconds we we have a feeling that okay this this is well done i will use it then maybe you will lose interest after a while but you really is that 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 feeling that clicks between the application and our understanding of what it will do and how it will present it to us hmm? um, okay there's also this social, social, sociology and psychology that i was mentioned before that's also some information that we need in small doses okay to to understand uh, and there's uh, some skills about uh, uh, graphical design so usability is not necessarily is not the same as good looking you can have something that okay very nice with color with uh, uh, shadows and with uh, gradients uh, and with animations very nice to look but this is difficult to use hmm? so graphic design capabilities are not enough for usability of course it's something is good looking is better hmm? but as we will see there are two levels actually of, of graphical design first is having a rational layout a layout that conceived uh, that transmits uh, the right information about the functionality of the system this has nothing to do with colors you can do it in black and white it has to do with the uh, uh, spacing with the dividers with the 
um, alignments and so on and hints like that that speak to the user to explain explain without thinking without need without requiring requiring the user to think explain what the what the different items of the user interface are doing then you can dress those with colors styles and so on and then at that point you need a graphical designer don't pull a graphical designer too soon in your or don't start the graphical design too soon co compared to the definition of the layout so there are different tasks so i'm personally i'm very bad at graphical layout and choosing colors and whatever but it's not the focus of usability don't don't, don't, don't be confused about that hmm? okay and uh, there's also some uh, issue about uh, writing okay writing in terms of documentation maybe uh well nobody writes documentation anymore but especially nobody reads documentation anymore but there's a lot of writing in our applications no, it's not long writing it's not pages of writing but there are labels there are titles there are menu items there are buttons and each of them is a, is a small label and choosing the right word for the label or for the menu voice or for the website and so on is critical hmm? uh, and so that's also one that is skill of course we will focus on this or we will try to understand the implications of the others we cannot be expert of everything here Okay, otherwise we are not going, do, going to do a six credit course, but a 60 credits a year or, or, or maybe more. So how can we use the knowledge from all these fields? Okay, this is our key knowledge, but all the others are just something that we not, don't really know. But we need them in order to create usable systems. How can we use this knowledge in our domain? Well, because the knowledge from these different fields has been in some way summarized, crystallized, distilled in some set of uh, methods, models, heuristics, some rules, guidelines, design styles, best practices, general conventions, and so on, that come from work on all these fields okay so right now i know if i want to select a color what is the con color contrast range i should apply to make the test uh, the text legible and visible i know what is more or less the size of the element i know where to put the okay button in the bottom right not in the top left or in the center why is there a law no but experimentation both uh, with experiments so we try to different alternative with a group of users we see which one is best and on the field other applications are doing uh, establish a convention and so it's better to use those conventions one uh, one of the messages from the norman book uh, is that uh, users spend uh, 99.9% .9 of their time on other websites not yours so you should not re uh, expect users to learn how to use your website you should make your website uh, conforming to how the users expect all websites to work oh i have better ideas i do something different don't you will lose the users because they will not find what you are what they are looking for in the right place they are looking there i look in the search function it's in the top right don't put it elsewhere why because everybody else does that and the user the users come to my website uh, and who taught them uh, where the search button is my competitors all the other websites I've told the user that some stuff is in the in some position when they come to my side they already have some learning somebody else has taught them this and I will exploit their knowledge the same as when I open a book and I see a big a big uh, 
sentence in, uh, in, in bold face uh, and the white page on the left, uh, this is the beginning of the chapter. Did any, anyone teach you how to find uh, where a chapter begins? No. We already used books. There are conventions, typographical conventions, and everybody is using those. Okay? The goal is not doing something fancy. If you are do doing art, uh, it's a different topic. If you are doing usability, you have to stick to the results of other people. Our focus is to make the users happier and faster and with less errors. Okay? So uh, we will learn all this uh, as practical as information that we, in some cases, uh, we understand why. In some cases, we just apply that because we trust uh, that other people have done some studies and uh, and. Uh, and it came out that the best way of doing of implementing a functionality is in a given way so let's stick to that there are also some conventions that have been uh, forced into the user uh, my favorite example is uh, this icon the hamburger menu the hamburger icon they call it we find it everywhere today four or five years ago didn't exist they were finding a way of shrinking the word menu into something smaller and so the big ones the developers of mobile devices started to force in their guidelines to use that icon for opening the menu at the beginning people were puzzled what's that let's try it out after a while it became standard so now you find it also on websites everywhere so it's something that requires an explicit effort uh, to force into the user because there's nothing intuitive about the, that the icon well yes it should remind you of the different lines of the menu it's a very long stretch uh, it's an abstract symbol for which billions of people now have a meaning we cannot force some new meanings of our users okay we don't have the, the billions of users or the billions of, of dollars that maybe the google and apple had when they try to put this uh, symbol into the user this, com this new convention this is something new it is quite recent okay um like for example another example is that right now in many applications when you want to add something at an item you have a big plus in the bottom right of the page if you go back some years uh, the plus was uh, a line below or an action at the top so that they're changing hmm? these conventions are changing we need to track them we need to be aware of them uh, try to when you are using the internet every day Try to have a part of your brain scanning for conventions. Uh, there's a trick that I like. Try to navigate a website in a language that you don't understand at all. Japanese. Nobody's Japanese here, right? Or Chinese. Well, it's impressive how much you can understand from that web page without understanding a, a, single, a single character because of the graphical conventions. Well, the title these are the headlines these are this uh, an advertisement uh, these are the sections of the website we don't know what it does but uh, let's try that hmm? okay so let's start to dig into some of these uh, methods or models that can help us in uh, in our design tasks uh, so the, our framework is that we have some user and we want that the user tries to accomplish some goal so it's a task oriented goal oriented uh, design process always okay we should always start from a user with a goal in a good in a specific domain of course hmm? uh, the user is perfectly competent of their domain each domain is a specific jargon a specific tasks uh, specific processes and so on hmm? so users think about their job what they want to do 
so if they want to play music they know everything about music about genres uh, about uh, uh, the singers uh, about the playlist the albums and whatever so there's a, a vocabulary and a set of concepts related to that domain if a user wants to you know uh, share a ride with their car there's a completely different set of concepts that come around but the users we should assume that they speak their language they know their application domain and our application should adapt to those huh? we should not we should use understand the terms the concept that they use to create our um, our application and uh, the tasks if you imagine a user describing a task i am composing a playlist uh, with all the rock music from the 80s okay it's a sentence that contains all the concept of a, of a given domain so the user speaks the task language the user understands the task language the domain language tasks are expressed in the domain language hmm? um, so we have at least two different languages that are clashing the users that speak we saw we call it the task language so they use the words and the concepts specific to their application domain and the system speaks uh, a different language we call it in the book they call it the core language the core language is the language of uh, buttons uh, icons uh, text areas uh, menus uh, scroll bars and so on in web applications or in mobile applications there may be depending on the technology there are different languages okay so the two should in some way match and we see the difficulty of matching so in creating a an interface i want to show something that for the user is a playlist okay there's no item as a playlist in my graphical library of components there are lists there are itemized lists there are rectangles i should construct something with a core language with my visual language for example the user interface language that will be perceived and understood as a playlist by the user hmm? i must construct something that will map to the user concepts both systems and users have a state the state of a system okay is easy for us to understand is the state of the variables inside the system the knowledge of the system the information that the system has at that point the data and the point in the interaction workflow in the algorithm where the system is arrived so the system already always knows which information some information and always knows which are the possible next steps it's in the algorithm okay it's in the code so the system knows whether at this point is expecting information or if it already has this information if uh, your exam is already booked or not the system knows that and the system knows that there is a process for book booking an exam there is some time window in which you can start the booking in which you must finalize the booking by the by a given date uh, and so on there's a process behind that this is every, uh, these are information that the designer of the system of, of the exam booking system has encoded into the system okay the user also as a state it's, we cannot read it because it's uh, in their mind in their brain we can also probably approximate or imagine what they can be thinking but the important part is that uh, the user part of the state of the user is the understanding of the state of the system why when i'm using a system i am always building in my mind a model of how the system works so the first time I took a bottle I didn't know how to open it maybe I pull maybe I unscrew maybe there's uh, um, some hinge that needs to be lift or some or something like that I start interacting with it in this case maybe by trial and error or by observing this uh, diagonal line here and so I decide or I understand I build a model that for opening the bottle 
I need to unscrew it in, in this specific case, in this specific bottle. Hmm? So we do it every time. And the same is with the interactive applications. While I am interacting with the system, I am building in my mind a model of how I think the system works. And I will expect the system to react to my actions. The more transparent a system is, the easier it is for a user to understand the state in which the system is and so understanding the, the changes in the state of system and so also creating a, mod, a, um, a matching model of the system behavior. If the system behaves in a strange way, well, then first it will be more difficult for me to create a mental model. But second, my model will not match the actual behavior of the system. So I think I'm doing something, actually the system will do something else. Because the behavior of the system is not intuitive, that is not communicated easily enough to the user. Okay? Um, and so why why the oh why, why is the user interested in, in understanding the behavior of the system? Uh, ultimately, not, not because it's curious, but because at the end it has an, it, the user will have an intention. I want to do something. I want to drink. Okay, so first I need to open the bottle. I have a goal. I want to drink. Then I need to open the bottle. I need an action, a task. So I need to understand that this, this system is able to perform this task, opening, and how this task is executed will be by unscrewing. So in my mind, I'm, I'm decomposing a problem into very small tasks, and if I'm uh, lucky, then the actions will be natural, will be intuitive. Hmm? So if we try to formalize it, uh, which is the very old uh, picture from the normal books, uh, Norman's books uh, 25 years ago, probably, let's say that interaction, of course, between a user and a system can be seen in two different moments. Evaluation and execution. Evaluation means that uh, the user tries to understand, evaluate what the system is trying to tell him. So I see a screen and I try to understand what is the information that the screen is giving me and what are the actions I can do on this screen. All of these two questions. I see something, some interface. What does it tell me? What information is there? And how I, what are the possibly possibilities of actions on that interface? Where can I click? Or where should I write? So, in this part, uh, I am trying to understand, first, to get the information that the system is trying to tell me, and the information about uh, the behavior of the system that the interface is trying to, to describe me, to suggest me. And the other part is execution. Okay, I, I see something, I got some information, I understood that now I want to enter my name and click OK, and so there's the execution part in which I actually perform some actions to the system, so I give some information to the system using, of course, the interface that for which I, I understood the behavior or I think I understood the behavior, and so I will provide information to the system. So in the, in the information system with the output channels, so the screen, the um, uh, speaker, sounds, and so on, vibrations. You know, today it's a lot of mobile devices that just uh, uh, communicate with the vibrations, are used uh, to communicate to the user, and the user will try to evaluate what the system is trying to tell. And the input channels, mouse, voice, touch, are used for providing, for executing actions on the system. But always remember that these two systems are speaking different languages, okay? The task language and the core language or interface language. So if we see that uh, in, the, in the time sequence, first the user wants to execute some action. So everything starts with the user. It has some desire, some goal. Uh, the goal is the ultimate goal, 
and so then it will translate to an intention so uh, like i said before i want to drink uh, so i need to open the bottle so from the goal that they want to reach uh, the intention is the actual task that I, I understand that i need to execute in order to reach that goal i want to enroll to an exam so i need to go to the booking interface and uh, this task may be done may be executed by a sequence of actions i grab the bottle i unscrew i separate the the, the, um, the top and then i drink and these action sequences are actually the, the buttons the menus the links the clicks the taps the, the swipes and all our user interface actions so once I decide that I will, I will click on that button, then step four, I will execute that action. First, in my mind, I, I'm building a plan right there and click OK. Then I will execute the plan. These are separate. Everything happens in milliseconds, of course. But these are, con from the cognitive point of view, separate steps that involve different abilities and different knowledge. For example, the last step uh, involves a lot of... Uh, physical uh, skills uh, clicking the right point or uh, swapping swiping the, uh, the right amount of the quantity that you want to scroll or you want to move and you if you miss it for uh, if you click a bit uh, uh, too far away from the button then it would, the, the action would be uh, it was a good intention but it was executed badly once i execute a some action the system will get the information will react with the change state and will present a new some change in the in the interface it's important i need to feel that something has changed otherwise i will never be sure that my command has been understood my action has been understood or are being at least received by the system if i click on something and nothing happens I will click again other 50 times because nothing happened okay so the system will change internally but will also need to show externally that something has changed at that point the user will perceive perception is something subconscious i see something i see some shapes some colors some letters on the physical level then i interpret the system state okay since now this uh, is no longer a, a text area but now it's a, it's a, a label it means that this name has been saved into the system because it cannot is not editable anymore so now it's fixed so with a small change in the layout uh, i communicated to the user that an item has been saved there's no need of writing the item has been saved nobody will read it it's just a, a showing a different state uh, that lets the user understand that the, that uh, value has been now saved into the system for example mm -hmm. and then i evaluate uh, the effect of what i did so i had a goal i did some actions by planning them and so on and then the system changed the state and I will, I will compare what i understand from the system state from the change modified system state uh, and compare it with the goal that i had Oh, I wanted to do that. Did I succeed? So I need to interpret the system state uh, and match it to my goal. If they match, then okay, I can progress to the next step. Otherwise, there's some mismatch, some difficulty in interaction, whether in the execution or in the interpretation, and so on. So these moments uh, are called uh, by by normal uh, the gulf uh, of evaluation and the gulf of execution. Uh, to represent the fact that uh, users and systems are never touching each other they're always separated by some communication channel which is constrained by the kind of input output systems the and uh, all the knowledge convention and mental models that the user will have in interacting with that system our goal is to make these two goals uh, as small as possible hmm? so removing all the obstacles in evaluation 
and removing all the obstacles in, evalu in uh, execution when a user is using a system. When you feel, when you see somebody which is, imp you know, you yourself, when you are in perfect symphony with an application, with a tool, you don't uh, perceive this interaction anymore. Uh, there's something very nice uh, about observing people, for example, programming. Okay, you're writing code with your keyboard, you're seeing the code in your screen, but actually in your brain, nothing of that exists. It's you and the algorithm. In between the text, the language, the screen, the keyboard, just disappear. Uh, you are focused there, and all the interaction disappears. If you try to change the editor, then you will feel it again because it doesn't behave naturally it doesn't come out of your fingers hmm? uh, when you uh, really own something you don't feel it anymore like with music hmm? at the beginning you have to count the fingers after that you think the notes and the fingers will move automatically hmm? of course there are skills or interaction let's say patterns uh, where you need the uh, years and years and years of learning uh, to reduce this gap these gulfs uh, we don't have this luxury of having a person that will train for 10 years for using our application uh, so so we should make these goals uh, as small as possible for not non-trained users for the general users non-trained but not stupid so uh, users that are expert in their domain in their application they know what they're doing okay so we should present it in a way that they feel it normally okay these are the original pictures for norman book uh, there's nothing more than what we said um, but uh, we wanted to pull just the, the historical picture hmm? um there's a, a refinement of this model by abo and bill uh, that are co-authors of, of normal in the later uh, versions of the book uh, they try to separate uh, the input and output blocks that before uh, were just embedded into the system because we know that one issue is the system itself let's say and that with all the algorithms data management and so on and uh, a part of the system is the management of the user interface so we try to separate the user interface from the rest of the system Okay, these two gaps still exist, uh, but we are focusing on the UI, on the user interface, uh, and trying to work on that uh, for reducing these gaps. And so, at this, at this point, uh, we have four different uh, information exchanges on which we can work. Okay, each of these arrows is some point where we can work. Okay, when we can make things better. Presentation. I have some information or I have some actions that they want to propose to offer to the user how do I present them how do I construct an interface a user interface that communicates in the best way possible what is the information I want to tell and what are the actions that I want to show the user that can be done we are in graphical user interfaces every screen has these has these two functions okay give information and giving you the buttons and the menus and the links for performing the next action if you think about text interfaces a terminal well the presentation is just for giving information and then what is the next action is not shown you must know the command it's something that you must know so it will not be part of the presentation no doubt that graphical interfaces are easier to use than terminal interfaces because they give you more information more visibility about the state of the system these are the comments that you can give at this moment of course there will also always be some expert users that will prefer the terminal for some tasks for example hmm? that different target users with different goals if we don't know the user and we don't know the goal we can never say interface a is better than b okay after the presentation we 
we painted an interface and there's the task that we call here observation that combines the perception from the user so seeing for example and decoding what they see hmm. it's not something we, we can act uh, very much because this is something that the user does in in, in their mind we can only prepare the presentation in a better way so that the observation will lead will be faster less ambiguous and will lead to a more correct understanding of our system hmm? but we must know a bit about the mechanism right, where the user is using for the observation and also the background that the user has in mind uh, when doing that then there's this articulation phase hmm, where the user plans and executes the action I am moving the mouse and clicking there because I want to do the, that, that action. And again, this is something the user does, but the devices, the input devices, can make or the location and the size of the interface elements can make things easier or more difficult. Um, and finally, when the input is received by the system from the user, well, this strange word performance actually means that the system will perform the command it's not about the efficiency or speed or it's just the act of performing or executing the request hmm? i would call it execution today but they decided from this different term there hmm? and so we try to execute him execute this by interpreting what the user wanted to say when they articulated the given action and sometimes uh, you, we need to guess or what the user wanted or maybe correct or maybe we understand that the user made an, er an error or could have made an error and so we need to give the possibility of correcting or correcti correcting the error or undoing the action because we are never sure hmm? we are never sure that what we are performing is really what the user wanted to say because it's really what he understood that we wanted to tell him imperfection is the, at the heart of human nature so we must deal with that at the core of our functionalities not just okay trying to compensate after the fact the fact we should recognize it is that hmm? by the way there are two types broadly of er errors that the user that the humans can do especially in the the, execu the, the execution part okay when the user is do, doing some actions uh, slips or mistakes a slip is when a user wanted to do a specific the, the right action the correct action but it failed in its in the execution okay like here when the the intention and the action were right but the execution was wrong i clicked the wrong button i press two keys at the same time why clicking the mouse moved because somebody was pushing me aside on the on the on the train so uh, we i understood perfectly perfectly what i had to do but there was some obstacle in executing the action itself so this is easy to correct because it's something that may be corrected, for example, by spacing the buttons better, by, I don't know, ignoring double keys uh, in the, when I press two keys at the same time, uh, by making, uh, by working on the layout uh, on the side of elements. Uh, maybe they're too small, maybe they're too close. Uh, and especially if two buttons with the opposite actions are too close, it's very dangerous. So try to rearrange them in order to minimize is not possible to avoid by to minimize the possibility of practical errors or a mistake is an error that happens in the previous stage when i'm planning my action i did the wrong planning 
because of a bad understanding of what the actions will do mm. do you want to save this document okay cancel okay what what, the, what do what, what do these actions do if i cancel i am canceling the closing of the action or or, or so i won't close it the the do i won't close the the editor or with cancel i'm canceling the canceling the saving hmm? so you are trying to close something without saving the file and the dialog tells you do you want to save the file do you want do you really want to close so it's very difficult to to give the right the real uh, an, uh, an immediate no, it's of course if you think about it you say okay but i mean cancel cancel means i don't close so i can save and okay means i will close so it will not be saved hmm? uh, it's a two-step process and it may generate uh, interpretation errors especially because different programs have different messages you want to save do you really want to close they are opposite in the in the meaning or some of three buttons huh? save and exit exit uh, without saving or cancel or so uh, the fact that they, we have many solutions and none of them sa is satisfactory is also a, 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 a symptom of something which is difficult to conceive uh, some but in this case the characteristic of the, the, of the interface lead the, the user to a wrong understanding of what will happen with a given action it will execute the right action executed from the practical point of view from the physical point of view the execution will be correct but the planning was wrong this is a, is a more difficult problem to solve because we we need to redesign more substantially the interface it's not just making the button bigger making the okay larger but changing the message the way in, in which it appears uh, the time or the the, the, um, the question that you are we are asking to the user and you know what is the real solution to this prob for the specific problem of do you want to save or not the real solution is not just don't ask but make it possible to recover the file when you reopen the editor so many editors especially those online but also some desktop ones uh, i don't know if you use notepad plus plus as this functionality when you close a, a doc the, the window it doesn't ask you whether you want to save the file or not there's no chance you can get <laughs> this uh, this right okay it just closes but then when you open the, the program again your file unsaved file will be there just where you left it google docs does the same thing online editors that do this they, so we remove this concept of saving and closing this conflict by giving you a different mental model the document is always there when you want it if you come back i will pull it out for you no? it's a good functionality of the system that solves and mistakes there's no more opportunity for these mistakes so but the solution was difficult we went 20 years probably to find these solutions and also the technologies always online and so on helped for that huh? uh, so the solution is not always obvious and not always easy but uh, then will be more radical uh, oh i use of course the word uh, in the previous slide human errors but i should not or we should never speak about human errors because that puts the blame on the user the fault on the user uh, the user is never at fault human errors are always or usually norman says the results of a bad design okay it's too easy to say the user is not able to use my system hmm? um, so we know the user are imprecise distracted they don't know everything and so the system design should take it into account minimize the change of uh, er errors minimize the change of wrong interpretations and so on hmm? so this is the whole goal uh, of our aci design processes and we work at, at different level levels at the same time 
so there is one level which is more um, immediate like the understanding and the usage of in of single user interfaces understand the button where, where to write the text how to submit the form and so on it's all very very quick and it's also all very well formalized we have a lot of conventions so we, if we don't do anything strange it will be easy but understanding the state of the system is more complex because the state the state of the system if you are if you are managing a complex process the system will have a complex state and so trying to let the user understand what the system is expecting is not so easy it's easier if the state of the system will mm, follow what the users already had in mind now we said at the beginning that users are experts in their domain okay so we not we should not force users to follow the system's behavior but we should model the system behaviors according to the normal flow of information that the users are maybe already using without my system on their practical life on their task hmm? oh this is an example of a of an articulation problem uh, this is a real picture that I took from a smart home hmm? uh, I will never tell you where uh, these uh, were on the side of a door the, this smartphone were was really automated so there were automation for doors windows lights uh, uh, the front door and everything you can imagine was there and the effect is that uh, on the side of uh, every every door there were in this case three six nine different switches um, and these are always work for the temperature probably is a thermostat is something different okay so imagine a normal people approaching that door okay multiply that by the number of doors that you have in your house you want to open the door or you want to switch a light on which one do you press how can the the system how is this system telling you which button to press but even in more in simpler cases in your home i guess very often you are pushing the right uh, the wrong uh, uh, light switch this and that and that no no and maybe you only have two okay but they they are not linked the, the position of the button is not linked to the position of the lights so there's no mental clue that will help you do the right choice and this, this is even this is even worse and it makes wor it's made worse by two other factors first who mounted these uh, switches mounted them in the vertical sense instead of the of the normal sense like that no? these are the five or three uh, boxes that should usually are horizontal they decided to mount them vertical so they are adding a confusion they are telling you okay this is not the the normal switch that you know in your house this is something different and so one step back how is it different what is the difference my question and there's no answer here it doesn't reply to me and uh, they also decided to make them of different colors with no specific meaning they had different colors and they put them randomly so one could imagine okay red is for lights and uh, gold is for doors no hmm? so this is a, a very bad example of usability what happened is that uh, i zoom on this the users felt a bit uncomfortable living in that house and so in the, in the second iteration they decided okay we have the solution to explain the actions they put some icons on the side of the buttons to show what what was the functionality of the button okay probably they want the content for the worst icons ever these two icons should be open the door and close the door i don't know which is which because in both cases there's a half open door and <laughs> i don't know whether it's opening or closing but in any way okay uh, but yeah, so you have to make a, let, a, lo a lot of intermediate steps look at the icon first i want to open the door right look at the icons understand which one means open which one means close throw a dice and then map these two icons left and right to the left and right of this button okay there is a it's quite obvious mapping but uh, it's an additional step 
why not put the right icon here and the left icon there okay it's easier it's more direct or on the button itself maybe <laughs> but we are now always trying to eliminate intermediate thinking steps or oh, pos possibilities for wrong understanding and the same was for the lights this is op switch all the lights on or something like that this is for the windows they put some arrows but i don't understand either whether it has there are two arrows okay one here and the other there for each icon totally butch and uh, <laughs> what happened is that the users after a while they both mm, understood how they worked and the, the, the final solution was they put some paper tape right uh, with the non toccare don't touch this okay so they, they had their own system of labeling th things uh, to help themselves remind uh, which were the real buttons to press and which were not uh, would had to be avoided so this is the real opposite of the don't mind me think uh, rule i need to think a lot uh, and i don't have the e the clues the information for helping me deciding what happens okay that was a corner case this is something that you already see you, you, that you saw many times now this is the former character dialogue in word microsoft word and uh, imagine this is not in italian or in english just look at this interface and tell me we have seven boxes here uh, what my this interface is telling me is that there are seven options that can be selected and they are all independent from each other from the visual of this interface right it turns out they are not independent because uh, barrato and barrato doppio strike and double strike are mutually exclusive footer and header and um, what's the i don't remember the english word okay. are mutually exclusive apice and pedice and these these three are also no sorry the, the first two are mutually exclusive and the other one is independent how can we know that if you read and uh, if we read and understand or if you if we try before clicking OK. This was a time when dialog windows still had the OK and cancel buttons. Right now they tend to disappear. When you change something, it will change immediately. Hmm? So if you do something wrong and you want to go back, you need to remember which items you did change. But it's a separate topic. So again, this is an interface who where the, the painting of the interface, no? we call it the um, presentation, does not give you enough information to understand the behavior of the system. Without trial and error, without trying to interact, or without a, a deeper understanding of what they do, or reading and thinking about what they do. <laughs> it turns out that Microsoft decided uh, they will only use uh, square boxes instead of the square and the round so radio button and chat buttons that are the custom ways of, of explaining that something is uh, um, mutually exclusive or can be uh, selected independently if you try to look at the corresponding window in uh, open office it's very different from this point of view it, it, it's more complex in a way but it doesn't lead you to this kind of interpretation error you cannot it interpret it in bad, badly so uh, what uh, we were saying in these four steps uh, we need to make explicit actions in our designs to make each of these four steps better okay how how can we do that with tools okay so for example all the performance uh, interpreting the input uh, uh, is now standardized by dialogues or widgets uh, so we know which except these cases, for example, of the of Word, we know what is the behavior and the action of a, of a given widget. Uh, the, we, there are, okay, we, we, we are never creating an interface pixel by pixel. We are always using some toolkits uh, that already give us, gives us some elements, buttons, dividers, layouts, and so on. Maybe also high-level toolkits uh, that will help us 
in a way in creating something that is easier to interpret and so on mm? so once we understand the problem of course we don't need to implement the solution at the bottom level but we can rely on some standard toolkits methods uh, libraries that already solve this problem for us mm? maybe they solve problems that we still don't understand but the, well, we, we were we were not aware of the problems but the toolkit already solves them no? for example when you put a button the button has many different states okay it's it's quiet it's selected it's selectable it's uh, the mouse over uh, it's being pressed it's being released so there are very little variations in the shading on the color that give the user the immediate feedback of the button don't design buttons yourself because you will lose some of these details but the toolkit designers uh, the, the graphical toolkit designers already took care of all these nuances of all the details uh, for the main uh, interface elements uh, um, for you actually okay um, okay so uh, at the end we have a lot of technology uh, in say all these uh, toolkits uh, widgets and dialog and so on these are the more or less uh, inter interaction styles hmm, that have been uh, established uh, uh, along the years and we need to use this as our vocabulary for creating interfaces for creating interactive systems we create interactive system no not pixel by pixel but by using a higher level language the language of layout the language of dialogues the language of, of forms the, the users the language of menus so they are these are high level concepts they are not natural concepts okay if it weren't for computers people would not be thinking in menus or in forms it's something people learned by using the computers or the mobile devices over time but we can use this language try to try to match uh, the user's mental model of the task they have to do okay so the next step would be actually to see how this will fit into the, des the, the design process uh, but uh, i'm i'm afraid we need to wait until next week okay thank you